Hi, I'm Matt from Motorsport Electronics, and in this quick deep dive video, we're going to cover some crank signal uh, debugging and working out why we're not getting sync on this particular engine, going through some typical cases why that might be so, using things like the inbuilt scope to diagnose it. So we're on a Ford ST150, we know our trigger pattern is 36 minus 1, but I'm going to go ahead and set this to the wrong pattern to 60 minus 2. And in previous videos I've shown how when doing so, if I now crank the engine, whilst I will get crank IRQs, which means that indeed our ECU is picking up the pulses from the crank sensor, we will not get sync. So let's go ahead and crank the engine. And we can see we don't get any synchronization from the engine at all. We have no RPM, but we do have IRQs coming in. We do have pulses reaching our sensor. If we look at the diagnostics tab, just close that graph down, we can see that we have lost sync uh, and we have some cam pulses and some crank pulses arriving at the engine. But let's try and figure out why we're not getting sync and RPM. And remember, we know that we're set to the wrong pattern. Let's just cycle power to get the car ready to crank again. Okay, so we're all connected in Mighty, we're on the Diagnostics tab, and we're on the Trigger Logger. If you lose the Trigger Logger, you can bring up a new one under the ECU uh, menu, and there's Trigger Scope there, which will bring up a new one of these boxes. Now, in this one, I'm only tracking Crank and Cam A. I'm not looking at Cam B, Cam C, or Cam D. And I'm just going to minimise this box to bring it across so I can see more of the menu. There we go. Okay, so ECU's connected down here, car's powers, engine's cold and so on. We have our spark and our fueling turned off in our ignition and fueling drivers. Not really relevant, but we have turned them off for the sake of safety. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press start to start logging. Now if I crank the engine... ...and then release the key, I can now see there's a log been created. Press stop and the, the log is now within the trigger scope. If I press minus a couple of times and zoom out, we can see the pattern that's coming in. Now I'm not worried about the end of the pattern when I finish cranking because the engine was slowing down, but if I go back along here, I can see the pattern that's coming into the engine. The sync status at the top here is red, showing at no point synchronization was gained. We never got crank synchronization at all, and we never got sync with the cam. So we never ended up in a green fully crank state. Now this is the ECU, remember, is expecting, incorrectly so, a 60 minus two pattern. And we know the engine is firing in a 36 minus 1 pattern, but let's just check. Maybe we're not sure. I've zoomed in slightly, and I'll come back along here, and I can see clearly this big gap. I can see the missing tooth. Now, if I right-click on here, I can put a marker line. And if I right-click in the other gap, I can put another marker line. And by doing so, I then get some information. I can see there's 35 rising edges, 35 falling edges. So it sounds like I have 35 teeth there, and clearly one missing. So I know, looking at this scope plot, that I have a 36 minus one crank pattern. I can zoom in as well, and I say, I can analyze the gaps in each tooth. I can see the events that are detected with the little red dots to indicate which edge we were listening for, which should be rising edge. And if I look at this, I can see that it's indeed the rising edge. But let's go ahead. We've, we now know, actually, it's a 36 minus one. So let's go over and set our Crank to 36 minus 1, indicated here that we need to power cycle, so let's do that, key off. Wait for Mighty to disconnect, and then key back on. There it is. Now when I crank, I can see my pulses have gone to zero on my crank IRQs. When I crank the engine now, I expect to see full synchronization and an RPM appear. Let's give it a spin. There it is. A stable RPM has been detected and established. The engine is now ready uh, to, to work on getting the fuel and the sparks happening at the right time, and we can then begin to run this engine. So that's how we've used the scope to diagnose what's going on in our engine when it comes to cranking. There's a couple of other things we can do within the scope logger itself. We can export what's in there. So if I press save, 
I can then choose to save the file, the trigger log file, that's within here. And that can be very useful for diagnostic support. So if you're ever asked to send a log file of your trigger scope to Motorsport Electronics or to your tuning agent, you simply go to menu and save the file that you've recorded. So the critical steps for diagnosing crank and signal problems is to bring up the trigger scope and see the pattern that the sensors are bringing in. The cam sensor isn't actually plugged in on this engine and it's picking up a lot of noise. And you can see here how it's just random stuff coming in on cam. So we'd never expect to gain cam synchronization if we turned cam on. However, the scope allows us to see that without having to use any external tools. I hope this video has demonstrated how useful it is using the trigger scope to analyse your own trigger pattern on your engine to work out why you're not getting sync and what you might need to resolve to get sync. Remember to look closely at the pattern for extra teeth, uh, noise events, missing teeth that shouldn't be there and so on. See you next time.